So, Dana, how did you know? Did you find this place through Padma? No, uh, you know Humana? Yes. Yeah. She gave me all the information. Oh, great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was very nice. Have you seen her lately? No, no. We have just some conversation through um, Facebook. Oh, okay. She's very pregnant. Yes, she must mm -hmm. be. <laughs> yeah. She must be getting ready to yeah, deliver. Mm -hmm. yeah. We have new with the girl in the overall. <coughs> yeah, there's some new faces, right? Heather, first time Heather's been here. Yes, it is. Well, to, for, to this evening, right? Yeah. So I'm going to go around and say names, our own names. John. Sharon. Joyce. Yasmin. Annie. Credence. Renata. Sandra. Heather. Christine. Claire. Tiana. Alvaro. Alvaro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying to get that right. <laughs> so, now some of you know that I I uh, I play guitar and sing in a church band on uh, Sundays. And uh, there's been this crazy development there where uh, the, the worship leader, his name is Nick, he uh, really, really amazing, unbelievable musician. He, uh, he was one of the very, very few children, he, he's, he's Russian, and uh, in Russia, when he was a little Russian boy, uh, it was, uh, you got free education if they picked you. And like, so if he, so he was one of the very select few that were chosen as a child to take, to get the best teachers 
that Russia could offer. His his whole life. I mean, his whole life. So, uh, it's hard to imagine, like I'm a musician and I can't even imagine the level of his musicality. I, it's very difficult for me to even imagine what he, he can do. Um, he's one of my teachers for, for, for certain. And I have been uh, under his sort of tutelage and guidance for about four years at, at the church. And he's really taken me up as a musician and a singer. And recently, uh, recently some really crazy inner, inner political stuff happened at the church where somebody sent, well, a, a, a member of the band sent an email to about 13 people that were members of the worship team in the church, uh, completely slandering Nick, the worship leader, saying all these reasons why that uh, Nick is pretty much just a monster. And he's done all these things for, for, for over the years. Um, it was a, like a libelous, libelous? Libelous email, I guess we could say. If, if it, it, the person that sent the email could easily get sued for it, I think. So then, uh, but so then the church had to treat it like a formal complaint because it, because a bunch of people were copied. So then, uh, anybody that was copied on that email, I was one of them, had to go through uh, this interview process where there was these questions that were asked. You know, and um, I see this guy like he's a holy man, <laughs> and you, you know. Uh, ask all these questions about what do you think of his leadership, what do you, what could be better, what could be, you know, what do you, you know, if it stays the same, would you stay, uh, all kinds of weird questions, and is he prepared, does he come prepared enough, and, um, and, uh, very hard to do that interview, you know, of course everything I said was like, yeah, he's amazing, and, but then, I guess a lot of people didn't say that. A lot of people had a lot of bad things to say. It was very, very interesting. Um, and the feedback was 95%, apparently, according to the church, great. But 5% negative, but intensely negative. Like, uh, saying like things like uh, he doesn't believe children can worship he doesn't believe uh, he has a problem with women he had you know this really uh, he's a uh, he's harsh he's uh, rude he, you know how he treats seniors is like all these really strange things that I never saw um, and he heard these things never and he never got past there was an interview and he never got past the first negative comment he was so furious that uh, he, he went through all this stuff uh, of believing that it was some kind of power struggle or something and that they really wanted him out and it was just some way of getting him out he didn't believe it, it was just very strange I'm just watching this whole thing what is going on here uh, and it, it was like losing a father for, for, for me. You know? It's like, it was like losing a father in a way, because then he was gone. And, and so the worship band trying to pick up the pieces and play music that we played with him before. And just nowhere near as good. Nowhere near the level. Nowhere near the feeling of soaring and this musical heights of like singing your heart out in worship. But here's the thing about all of that that is, is mind-blowing. 
there are people that are in the congregation that like it better. I, uh, a lot of them seem to like it better. For one thing, they're saying, well, it's not as loud. <laughs> <laughs> so we can actually hear the harmonies more. Okay. And then someone, a, a nice couple came up to me yesterday and said, you know, I, I, you know, we just heard Nick's gone and we're very sorry. Um, but... You know, and there was there, and last Sunday, there, our our leader blatantly screwed up three times in a row. Just made re- it was really obvious, so much so <laughs> that she had to actually stop playing, <laughs> and actually stood up <coughs> and talked to the congregation. <laughs> 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 I made everybody laugh, actually, and she sort of turned this lemon into lemonade or something, you know, and. So, but this beautiful couple come up to me and they say, you know, uh, y- you know, maybe you guys weren't pitch perfect today, but it was real. <laughs> and I'm like, as opposed to what, you know? And, uh, you know, it's like, um, you can see the, the, the heart in it. It's very moving on a whole other level. It's very interesting. And last Saturday we had all met and like and, and so what you know what do we do from here? You know, now that we've lost this leader. <laughs> and we really only got through one of the ten questions we were supposed to answer in this workshop, but what was answered was, well, let's just Whatever we do, we have to be authentic. Whatever we do, it has to come from our hearts. That's the bottom line. It's not up to us to decide who we're supposed to be singing to or who we're supposed to be opening the hearts of or this this or that, because that was one of the questions, which is a strange question. Um, And so that was, okay, how are we going to do that? And how do we... uh, how do we dissolve any boundary between the worship leaders, the singers, and the congregation? Like, that was one of the things. How do we do that? Not only that, all these ideas came up. But it seemed like in, our, in the humanity of our failing, we somehow did that. In the humanity of just trying to survive the situation, <laughs> and and doing our best. Somehow there was a community. A community was created that wasn't there before. Because a lot of times before, it was people were saying it's like almost like a performance versus like people joining in. And this uh, also this uh, couple. One of the things that they said was, the husband said, you know, I'm, I'm, half the time I'm here. And half of the time, I'm this other church in Nanaimo. And he goes, this church is, you know, very blessed by God, especially this church, which I don't know why, what he meant by that. <laughs> <laughs> um, <coughs> and why anyone would ever think that, I don't even know, but he thinks that. So he says, the, the, the place I go to in Nanaimo, their, their music min- ministry is just horrible. It's just bad. I'm like, well, what do you mean? He goes, oh, the drummer can't even keep the beat. I'm like, and I go, I'm like, what? And he goes, but it's good. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, what do you mean? He goes, it's just from the heart. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. You know? And uh, it's just, isn't it just the way it is? And isn't it so easy to forget that we don't get to decide. We don't get to decide what our 
brilliance is going to do or you know or what our lack thereof is going to do like we don't know whether the the most we don't know if the thing someone needs from us is a big mistake or you know some shining performance or uh, but maybe maybe what the world needs from us is is just that we show up you know, whatever it is whatever it is that we're doing you know whatever it is that we're doing whether we're crunching numbers at work or digging a ditch or Saving the rats, <laughs> you know, like whatever it is. But everywhere we go, everywhere we go is the environment that we're in. Everywhere we go. Uh, whether you're driving, whether you're on the bus, whether you're you know, walking your dog, everywhere we go. The best that we can do is show up. With as much heart as you can show up with, I think. And if and maybe maybe if we understood that, we wouldn't be so wrapped up in the details of succeeding and failing. Because isn't that suffering? Like how much how much suffering is, is, you know, tightly wrapped around this idea that perplexes us and pulls us and pulls us and motivates us, you know, succeeding or failing at some, something, some idea. And it, I've done a lot of studying. Uh, done a lot of meditating. Done a lot of reading. <laughs> Taking a lot of teachings. And to me, this this smacks of the simplest and most difficult and sort of highest teachings. You know, if you if you think of it in Buddhist terms, which sometimes I do, because uh, I've read a lot of Buddhism, sometimes it's it's written and they say that a person of sort of lesser capacity would say, or lesser meditative capacity, um, maybe, it's, it, it, which is not a bad thing, just it's a, a skill level or something needs more elaboration needs more elaboration and a person with uh, a greater sort of sense of stillness and skill level and I guess almost like faith and devotion maybe needs almost no elaboration like zero almost zero elaboration in order to fall in to a deep state of meditation. But further than that, beyond meditation, and arise or fall into what we naturally are. Because we can get so wrapped up in trying to be something that we'll just forget that we are the thing that we're trying to become. We are it. It's just there's a misunderstanding there somewhere. There's a there's a layer. There's layers and layers and layers of ideas, like they're compacted over eons of lifetimes or something that we just oh, so hard to see through. You know, so hard to believe that uh, contentment is right here, and that we don't need to judge ourselves every second. We don't need to put ourselves up against any other barometer, any other meter, any other person, any other idea. We don't ever have to do that. That's a choice that we make. And maybe it's not a choice. 
It seems like a choice, but it's like a fever. But if we are just present and natural and as deep as we can be with ourselves, then what else? What else is there to do or be? And that we have no control over who is affected in what way by whatever we do. And then maybe our heart motivation is the most important thing. Anyone disagree? <laughs> How do we let it all go? Mm -hmm. How? How do we let it all go? Oh, just surrender. Did you hate that? Oh, just surrender. <laughs> yeah, thanks, John. <laughs> yeah, thanks for that. I'm just going to go surrender. I'm going to go in a corner and surrender everything now. Yeah, we don't get to choose things like that. It's, it happens over time. <clears throat> our uh, our personas, our faces disappear over time day by day meditation by meditation by incrementally and daily going to a place within us where those things aren't it's that simple it really is that simple because we are have you noticed? We are, we are habitual creatures. We are creatures of habit. We so are. I mean, I don't even like moving any time. <laughs> you know, it's like once if I have some kind of momentum happening, like it's sometimes for me, I find it hard to just change, you know, get just to get to work. You know, sometimes it's, uh, I have to convince myself that I better go because I'm very happy sipping my coffee in bed. Uh, you know, and if... If our habit, if our deep, deep habit is to be listening to the voice in the head that's just beating us up and, and, and pulling us and pulling us all the time, I mean, to break that habit, it's just going to take time. It's just going to take time. Turning inward, going to a place where that voice does, does not ha has no authority. Has no authority. And then there's a part of you that knows it has no authority there. And then you re-emerge. You re-emerge out of your meditation. You re-emerge. You re-emerge. Uh, and it, it's almost like um, going back into the fire where the, the confused mind has authority. And like in a pulls you around. You know, one more day, getting beat up by the mind. One more day. And then you just, once again, you go back to the meditation. But over time, over time, over time, it just will lose its grip. It will lose its grip on you. And then you will see that you always were the thing that you wished you could become. <laughs> And then you get to laugh about it. <laughs> <laughs> so why don't we do a little meditation? <laughs> <laughs>